in 10 hectic weeks in 29, Defense Secretary Robert Gates cut an estimated 20 high-profile weapons averted by the Department of Defense, reckoning some $330 billion in future spending. Nolan Finley. We've been had, folks, nearly $800 billion of our money was spent to end a recession that was already over. The massive spending didn't put Americans back to work, so all we end up with is a huge expanded government and a gigantic debt that will be repaid with higher taxes, or either ourselves or our grandchildren. Rick Sella, $4 yeah. trillion dollars in two years' time is how he's increased the debt All as right. a president. Republicans steadfast in opposition to White House wayward federal spending. And U.S. dollar printing is huge risk, China's central bank advisor says. And Brazil ready to retaliate for U.S. move in currency war. You see, this is worldwide, friends. We are being criticized around the world. China, Brazil, my oh my. And now here we are again. Asia stocks sound the retreat across Europe and Asia. It's global. Yes. UK embraces austerity. Whoa. They're experiencing it also. British government to lay off. Look at that 600,000 people. There's no way other way. They can't get out of it any other way. U.S. wheels less clout at the summit. Now, that's because... That was the G20. The president wanted them to do what he's doing, and they wouldn't do it. No way are we going your way The search for a new currency system. And the U.K., every email and website to be stored. Wow. Chinese supercomputer likely to prompt unease in the United States. Now, you know, friends, Jack, you wanted to warn the world about a financial disaster that could be on the way. Is that true around the world? Oh, Rexella, you've heard me say this a number of times this last year, but James chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, tells the story of what's going on globally, ladies and gentlemen. And God says, Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. What is happened? Verse 4, they heap treasure together for the last day, and now they've lost it all. And in Revelation 18, verses 10, 17, and 19, the cry is over everything they've lost. And one hour so great judgment has come, and one hour so great riches has come to nothing. In one hour is she, the world, made desolate financially. And they're even casting their silver in the streets in Ezekiel 7, 19. And their gold is being confiscated, removed. It's not even going to help you. And that's why Revelation 16, 1 says, none of these things can help in the day of the wrath of the Lord. And that's the tribulation hour, Rexella. Right. The tribulation hour. And once in a while, I'm talking to somebody and they say, the tribulation hour makes me frightened. I'm afraid of the financial disaster and all the rest. But I want to ask Jack this question. Should it really frighten a Christian? Or does it just point to the coming of the Lord and it's a better day coming, Jack? Well, first of all, when we come to Jesus, we become born again Christians. And some of you believers who say you're Christians don't like that language, but then you have trouble with Jesus because he's the only one that mentioned it in John chapter 3, verses 3, 5, and 7, and said you must, must be born again. But then there's an experience we can have with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18, be filled with the Holy Spirit. What happens when one is, Galatians 5, 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The Holy Spirit gives you that joy. And that's why the psalmist could say in chapter 38, verse 25, I have been young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And in Hebrews 13, 5, he says, Be content with such things as you have. For God has said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. You know, I think of people like George Burns and Bob Hope and Warren Buffett, the billionaire, Bill Gates, they got to leave it all behind someday. Mm -hmm. It must be terrible when they're going to put you in a casket and you got $50 billion lying somewhere you haven't used. But you know, there's something far better. Now get this, this is 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. Godliness 
with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, we'll carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. For the love of money, not money, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after greedy and grasping, they've erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and go after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, temperance. And he says, lay hold on eternal life because of these things. That's what counts. Oh, thank you so much, Jack. In other words, the Bible tells us that you don't get peace and happiness by what you have. It doesn't come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. When you have the Lord in your life, you will have joy and you will have peace no matter what. Even if we get a new system, you know, Jack's talked about that. Even if we get a new financial system worldwide, we can have peace. And Rexella, that system will not be monetary. It will not be pegged to gold and silver, all of this is going to fail as we've already proven just a few minutes ago. It's going to be a numerical system called the mark of Antichrist, the mark of the beast. The New World Order is already preparing it. When they met at Chancellor Virginia, they said we will microchip every human being on earth. That's six billion, uh, seven hundred and fifty million of us by 2017. And that is Revelation 13, verses 16 and 18. He calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead that no man, no man might buy or sell, save he that the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, here's wisdom, let him that understanding count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6666. Six, six, six. You've heard that number often. You're going to hear more about it. You also find that in Revelation 14, verses 9, 11, chapter 15, verse 2, chapter 16, verse 2, chapter 19, verse 20, and chapter 20, verse 4, and Rexella, we're on the way. That's why we're pleading with you. Don't put off salvation. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Everything is in line for the final hours, according to the Bible. Ooh, according to the Bible, he always gives us the Bible. One of President Obama's greatest challenges in the world of politics would be the politics in the Middle East. And take a look why. Obama and the U.S.-Israel alliance, the Obama administration's basic hostility to Israel is so salient that no amount of appeasing on any specific issue will alter its position. Now, do you remember Helen Thomas? Of course, she's a journalist that made some inflammatory remarks about Israel. Well, look what's happening. Arab American Group's prize for Helen Thomas raises ire and American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee. Whoa, Jack, you what want to say something joke. about that? Anti-Discrimination Committee of the Arabs, and then they give her a special medal, and forgive my language, because she said to the Jews, get the hell out of here, go back to Germany and Poland, where six million of them were slaughtered and gassed and cremated. And that's the worst thing that any person has ever said, especially a journalist in America, and God forgive her, she's going to stand before God someday and pay for that, and she is totally ignorant of the Bible because that is God's land. 120 times it says that. Ezekiel 36, 24, I'll take you from among the Gentiles, gather you of all nations, and bring you into your own land. Amos 9, 15, I will plant them, the Jews, in their own land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of that land, let alone being driven out by any group. And I don't care if it's Hamas or Fatah or Hezbollah or the Taliban or any of them. That is their land. And 930 times this book says Jerusalem belongs to the Jew. Get that, Mr. President? You want to give it to the Arab Muslims. All right, let's go on here with a very interesting headline. Also, new and more widespread dangers rapidly mounting against Israel. And here again, the Israel Arab time bomb. And then Fiat. 
Palestinian Authority will declare independent state in August of 2011, and Jerusalem cannot be the capital of a state called Israel. Now, of course, those are the Palestinians talking. Oh, Jack, anti-Semitism, it is on the rise, isn't it? Rexel, this is horrible. Here in the Bible, we read in Joel 3, verse 2, that World War III will start when they divide the land and divide the capital. Now, here is the group headed up by Hamas saying, we will establish a Palestinian state by 2011, like it or lump it, and we don't need Netanyahu or anyone else to tell us that we can. Well, our Netanyahu says, wait a minute, why would you declare a state when you Muslims and you Palestinians won't even believe Israel is a state? Check the maps of the Muslim world and try to find Israel. They do not exist. And I know they're angry. Yes, there's great persecution coming. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, the last for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob changed his name to Israel in 2 Kings 17, 34. Daniel 12, 1, there should be a time of trouble for the Jews such as never was since there was a nation. And the Bible teaches 18 times in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that Russia is coming down to the Middle East, and then it'll be China, and that's Revelation 16, 12, and Revelation 9, 14, 18, the greatest war in history. Armies totaling 200 million in verse 15, in chapter 9, and then finally all nations. But then Christ comes and sets his foot upon the Mount of Olives right in front of Jerusalem. And that's Zechariah 14, 4, and he's going to sit on David's throne in Jerusalem. Luke 1, 32 and 33, for a thousand years and then forever. And Israel will never cease to exist, for God says, I'll give them an everlasting name. Isaiah 56, 5. Oh, so great, Jack. Our time is almost gone, friends, but it's time for you to open your heart to the Lord, don't you think? I believe it is, Jack. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. I'll be brief. Pray it after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross that provides salvation for all of us, including me. Jesus, I trust in what you did on the cross for me. Today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Oh, if you pray that prayer, please write to me. There's my address on the screen, and I'll send you absolutely free this wonderful little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. You want to go in a new direction? He'll walk with you in that direction. So write to me. It'll be in the mail as soon as I hear from you. Now, friends, woo, once again, we're going to be telling you how you can receive this wonderful offer of the week. Here's our announcer, Chuck. My friend, to order your Prophecy Bible, call 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send 5995 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send 5995 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. And now back to Rex Heller. Thank you so very much. Write to me. Please make the call. There's the number right away. Friends, you want to get rid of some of the things in your life. How about a bad temper? You can't get rid of your temper by losing it. <laughs> I'll say. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. And so do we so very, very much. Keep looking up. Bye-bye. Thank you.